Chapter 14. Some farewells are easier than others. P. Marlowe. So, where do we go from here? Tananda asked. She and Chumley were helping me pack. We had all agreed that having incurred the combined wrath of the king and queen, it would be wisest to delay my departure as little as possible. Masha was off seeing to Gleep and Buttercup, as well as saying her goodbyes to Bad Axe. I don't really know, I admitted. I was serious when I said I had accumulated enough wealth for a while. I'll probably hole up someplace and practice my magic for a while, maybe at that inn in Oz and I used to use as a home base. I say, why don't you tag along with the little sister and me, Chumley suggested. We usually operate out of the bazaar at Diva. It wouldn't be a bad place for you to keep your hand in, magic-wise. It flashed through my mind that the mob must be starting its must have started its infiltration of the bazaar by now. It also occurred to me that in the pre-wedding rush, I hadn't told Tananda or Chumley about that particular portion of the caper. Having remembered, I found myself reluctant to admit my responsibility for what they'd find on their return. I don't know, Chumley. I hedged. You two travel pretty light. I've got so much stuff. I'd probably be better off settling down somewhere permanent. It was a pretty weak argument, but the troll seemed to accept it. Maybe because he could see that mountain of gear we were accumulating, trying to clear my quarters. Well, think it over. We'd be glad to have you. You're not a bad sort to have around in a tight spot. I'll say, Tananda agreed with a laugh. Where did you find those rings, anyway? Bought them from a street vendor at the bazaar. On Diva? Chumley said with a frown. Two spelled rings like that must have sent you back a pretty penny. Are you sure you have enough money left? Now it was my turn to laugh. First of all, they were they aren't spelled. That was just a bluff. I was running on the royal. That was just a bluff. I was running on their royal majesties. The rings were playing junk jewelry, and I got them for free. Free? Now Tananda was frowning. Nobody gets anything for free at the bazaar. No, really, they were free. Well, the vendor did say, did get my permission to say that I use his wares, but that's the same as free, isn't it? I mean, I didn't pay him anything, any money. As I spoke, I found myself suddenly uncertain of my good deal. One of my earliest lessons about dealing with devils was, if you think you've made a good deal with a devil, first count your friends, then your limbs, then your relatives. Permission to use your name, Tenanda echoed, for two lousy rings, no percentage or anything? Didn't Ozzy ever teach you about endorsements? There was a soft bamf in the air. Is someone taking my name in vain? And Oz was there, every green scaly inch of him, making his entrance as casually as if he had just stepped out. Of the three of us, I was the first to recover from my surprise. Well, at least I found my voice. Oz, hi kid, miss me? But Oz, I didn't know if I should laugh or cry. What I really wanted to do was embrace him and never let go. Of course, now that he was back, I would do no such thing. I mean, our relationship had never been big in the emotional displays department. What's the matter with everybody? My mentor demanded. You all act like you never expected to see me again. We, Oz, I... We didn't, Tenanda said flatly, saving me from making an even bigger fool of myself. What well, little sister means, Chemley put in, is that it was our belief that your nephew Rupert had no intention of letting you return from Perv. Oz gave a derisive snort. Rupert, that upstart, don't tell me anybody takes him seriously. Well, maybe not if your powers were in full force, Tenanda said, but as things are... Rupert? Oz repeated. You two have known me a long time, right? Then you should get it through your heads that nobody holds me against my will. Somehow that quote sounded familiar. Still, I was so glad to have Oz back, I would have agreed to anything just then. Yeah, I chimed in eagerly. This is Oz. Nobody pushes him around. There, my mentor grinned. As much as I hate to agree with a mere apprentice, the kid knows what he's talking about. This time. Chumley and Tenanda looked at each other with that special gaze that brother and sister used to communicate non-verbally. You know, big brother, Tenanda said, this mutual admiration society is getting a bit much for my stomach. How about you? Actually, the troll responded, I wasn't hearing all that much mutual admiration. Somehow the phrase mere apprentice sticks in my mind. Oh, come on, you two, Oz waved. Get real, huh? I mean, we all like the kid. We also know he's a trouble magnet. I've never met anyone who needs looking after as badly as he does. Speaking of which, he turned his yellow eyes on me with that speculative look of his. I noticed you're both here, and I definitely heard my name as I phased in. <clears throat> what I need more than fond hellos is a quick update as to exactly what kind of a mess we have to bail this great Steve out of this time. I braced myself for a quick but loud lesson about endorsements, whatever that was, but the troll surprised me. No mess, he said, leaning back casually. Little sister and I just dropped by for a visit. In fact, we were just getting ready to leave. Really? My mentor sounded both surprised and suspicious. Just a visit, no trouble. Well, there was a little trouble, Tenanda admitted. Something to do with the king. 
I knew it, Oz chortled, rubbing his hands together. But Skeev here handled it himself, she finished pointedly. Currently, there is no problem at all. Oh, strangely, Oz seemed a bit disappointed. Well, I guess I owe you two some thanks, then. I really appreciate your watching over Skeev here while I was gone. He can... I don't think you're listening, Oz, Chumley said, looking at the ceiling. Skeev handled the trouble. We just watched. Oh, we could have pitched in if things got tight, Tananda surprised. You know, the way we do for you, Oz. As it turned out, we weren't needed. Your mere apprentice was more than equal to the task. Finished the job rather neatly, you know, the troll added. In fact, I'm hard-pressed to recall when I've seen a nasty situation dealt with as smoothly or with as little fuss. All right, all right, Oz grimaced. I get the message. You can fill me in on the details later. Right now, the kid and I have some big things to discuss. And I mean big. Like what, I frowned. Well, I've been giving it a lot of thought, and I figure it's about time we left Postletum and moved on. Um, Oz, I said. I know, I know, he waved. You think you need practice. You do, but you've come a long way. This whole thing with the trouble you handled only proves my point. You're ready to... Oz? All right, I know you've got friends and duties here, but eventually you have to leave the nest. You'll just have to trust my judgment and experience to know when the time is right to... I've already quit. Oz stopped in mid-sentence and stared at me. You have? He blinked. I nodded and pointed at the pile of gear we had been packing. He studied it for a moment as if he didn't believe what he was seeing. Oh, he said at last. Uh, well, in that case, I'll just duck over to talk to Grimble and discuss your severance pay. He's a tight-fisted bird, but if I can't shake 500 out of him, I don't know. The, I'll know the reason why. I know the reason why, I said carefully. Oz rolled his eyes. Look, kid, this is my field of expertise, remember? If you go into a bargaining session aiming low, they'll walk all over you. You've got to. I've already negotiated for a thousand. This time, Oz's freeze was longer, and he didn't look at me. A thousand, he said finally, in gold? Plus a hefty bonus from the king himself, Tenander supplied helpfully. We've been trying to tell you, Oz, old boy, Chumley smiled. Skeev here has been doing just fine without you. I see. Oz turned away and stared silently out the window. I'll admit to being a bit disappointed. I mean, maybe I hadn't done a first-rate job, but a little bit of congratulations would have been nice. The way my mentor was acting, you'd think he... Then it hit me. Like a runaway war chariot, it hit me. Oz was jealous. More than that... He was hurt. I could see, see it now with crystal clarity. Up until now, I had been blinded by Oz's arrogant self-confidence, but suddenly the veil was parted. Oz's escape from Purr wasn't nearly as easy as he was letting on. There had been a brawl, physical, verbal, or magical, some hard feelings and some heavy promises made or broken. He had forced his way back to Claw with one thing on, mind, on his mind. His apprentice, his favorite apprentice, was in trouble. Upon returning, what was his reception? Not only was I not in trouble, for all appearances, I was doing better without him. <clears throat> Tananda and Chumley were still at it, merrily chattering back and forth about how great I was. While I appreciated their support, I wished desperately I could think of a way of getting it through to them that what they were really doing was twisting a knife in Oz. Um, Oz, I interrupted. When you've got a minute, there are a few things I need your advice on. Like what? came the muffled response. From the sound of things, you don't need anybody, much less a teacher with no powers of his own. Tananda caught it immediately. Her gadfly manner dropped away like a mask, and she signaled desperately to Chumley. The troll was not insensitive, though. His reaction was to catch my eye with a pleading gaze. It was up to me. Terrific. Well, like, um, and Masha exploded into the room. Everything's ready downstairs, hot stuff, and... Oh, hi there, Green and Scaly. Thought you were gone for good. Oz spun around, his eyes wide. Masha, he stammered, what are you doing here? Didn't the man of the hour here tell you? She smiled, batting her expansive eyelashes. I'm his new apprentice. Apprentice? Oz echoed, his old fire creeping into his his old fire creeping into his voice. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Oz. I smiled meekly. Apprentice? He repeated, as if he hadn't heard for he hadn't heard. Kid, you and I have got to talk now. Okay, Oz, as soon as I now. Yep, Oz was back. Um, if you'll excuse us, folks, Oz and I have to... For the second time, there was a bump in the room. This one was louder, which was understandable, as there were more beings involved. Specifically, there were now four devils standing in the room, and they didn't look happy. We seek the great Skeev, one of them boomed. My heart sank. Could my involvement with the mob have been discovered so fast? Who's asking? Oz casually placed his bulk between me and the intruders. Tanand and Chumley were also on their feet, and Masha was edging sideways to get a clear field of fire. Terrific. All I needed to complete my day was to have my friends soap up the trouble I had started. We are here representing the merchants of the bazaar on Diva, seeking an audience with the great Skeev. About what? 
my mentor challenged. The devil fixed him with an icy glare. We seek the great ski, not idle chit-chat with a pervert. Well, this particular pervert happens to be the great skeeve's business manager, and he doesn't waste his time with devils unless I clear them. I almost said something, but changed my mind. Concerned or not, this was not the time to take a conversation away from Oz. The devil hesitated, then shrugged. There is a new difficulty at the bazaar, he said. A group of organized criminals has gained access to our dimension, threatening to disrupt the normal flow of business unless they are paid a percentage of our profits. Tananda and Chumley exchanged glances while Masha raised an eyebrow at me. I studied the ceiling with extreme care. Oz alone was unruffled. Tough. So what does that have to do with the great ski? he demanded. Anticipating the answer, I decided I tried to decide whether I should fight or run. Isn't it obvious? The devil frowned. We wish to retain his services to combat this threat. From what we can tell, he's the only magician around up to the job. That one stopped me. Of all the strange turns of events, or turns events could have taken, this had to be the most unanticipated and, well, bizarre. I see, Oz murmured, a nasty gleam in his eye. You realize, of course, that the great Skeeve's time is valuable and that such a massive undertaking would require equally massive remu remuneration. Every alarm in my system went off. Um, Ski, Oz? Shut up. I mean, be patient, Master Skeeve. This matter should be settled in a moment. I couldn't watch. Instead, I went to the window and stared out. Listening over my shoulder, I heard Oz name an astronomical figure and realized there might be a way out of this yet. If Oz was greedy enough and the devil stingy enough, done, said the spokesman. Of course, that's only in advance, Oz pressed. A full rendering will have to wait until the job's completed. Done, came the reply. And that is the fee only. Expenses will be reimbursed separately. Done. The advance will be waiting your arrival. Anything else? In tribute to the devil's, to devil's generosity, Oz was unable to think of any other considerations to gouge out of them. There was another bamf, and the delegation was gone. How about that? Oz crowed. I finally put one over on the devils. That, what's that thing you always say about anyone who thinks they've gotten a good deal from a devil, Oz? Tananda asked sweetly. Later, my mentor ordered. Right now, we've got to get our, first, our things together and pop over to the bazaar to scout out the opposition. We already know what the opposition is. How's that, kid? I turned to face him. The opposition is the mob. You remember the organized crime group that was sponsoring Big Julie's army? A frown crossed Oz's face as he regarded me closely. And how did you come by that little tidbit of information, if I may ask? I regarded him right back. That's the other little thing I wanted your advice on.